Okay, great. Well, the other day I read something about this social media thing, which I didn't really understand because all media seems to be social. And I'm going to go really fast. We're going to talk about this and uh, we're just going to go. So a as a disclaimer, the first thing we're going to talk about is a caution. Do you all remember that line in, uh, and I don't know if my slides are going. Okay. Do you all remember that line in Talladega Nights where he says, with all due respect, right before he tells the guy that, uh, that he thinks he'd lost his balls? Well, well this is kind of like that. I just want to say that. And, and I mean no moral judgment on anybody. Well, except for Hitler. I really don't like that guy. He was a dick. So <laughs> in the 14th century, Europe was controlled socially by the church. And until about mid-century, then the plague came and killed about a third of the people. When they killed about a third of the people, people start to get disillusioned by, you know, their, their willies turning black and their whole town dying and stuff like that. So at the 15th century, when that started, the books were, were really expensive. They cost about the same as a farm. Well, not a Farmville farm, obviously, because those things have about the inherent value of the Vatican if it were, if it were haunted by the spirit of, of Michael Jackson. So anyway, the, the, Catholic, the, the Catholics weren't very happy about it. That, so they were trying to stop mass media. They were, ex they were especially upset with the Protestants who were letting people interpret things in their own language by giving them the Bible. So when the Protestants started doing that, they, they, were, <laughs> they, they were especially upset with that. And so as they were doing that, which, which sometimes personal interpretation is complete crap, right? So, so you, you had people who were interpreting stuff, and then other people were interpreting stuff, and then you had different followers, and it turned into complete crap. So... Let's stop for a slide and talk about how human power works, which is basically like a caramelized bread pudding. You have a whole bunch of different little pieces of soggy bread that come together into a delicious pan of warm goodness. And so that's kind of what, what power is about. So people put that together. Well, that power started to congeal in different kinds of things, like th this thing called nationalism, which was based on, on ideas and geography and all this stuff like that instead of on the central power of the church. So that was nationalism. And nationalism started a whole lot of wars. So it started a lot of wars, but it also kicked off the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was, was, was it completely increased productivity, but it also had child labor and child labor because they were cheap and they were easy to control. You know, good old Irish punch gets somebody right there. Well, those guys grew up and they had black eyes and they were upset. So what they did was started to create these, these, these political parties that, that were formed around these worker parties like fascism. Well, fascism... Was, was embraced by Germany, who had been under oppressive treaties. And, and so like charismatic leaders like Hitler. Hitler was a psychopathic fuckhead who had, who, who had racism instead of limbs. But what he did was pull together a group and started this horrific war with awful weapons. So after that, after that war, the US and Russia filled that power vacuum. And, and the, the Cold War was sort of like, and, and then what they did was they, they really wanted to be in each other's pants but they were trying not to shove nuclear missiles up each other's bumps. So that, that was basically the Cold War. So out of the Cold War, in case in the contingency of nuclear weapons, what the US did was started to create these, these distributed computer networks so they wouldn't have to have everything blown up at once if, if you got that. So that was the birth of the internet and the third great knowledge revolution. So knowledge revolutions, what they do is they change scope. They change how we look at our identity. They, they shrink time and space, so our identity is not necessarily tied to our generation or our geography. That's exactly what they do. So, I actually have five dollars if anybody can yell this out. Doctor Who? All right, you got it right there. Five dollars, I got it in the pocket. So let's talk about the future. Let's talk about what the future looks like. And I'm going to wait for the next slide. So, th these are my predictions for the, for the future. You guys ready for this? All right, so content is king. Content will be the currency of our age. It's, it's how we'll, we'll pay for things as our, our normal infrastructure is commoditized. Content will be the increase in value over time. So content is king, remember that. So the next thing is augmented reality. As we continue to combine digital reality with, with, with real reality, we'll create this augmented change reality, which will immediately be filled with tits and giant robot spiders <laughs> as we remove all sense of morals and physics. Non-geographical non -geographical nationalism. What that means is we'll start to have this nationalism created around things that aren't geographic, more around ideas. So if I were to sum up the future, it would be filled with Nazi robot spiders and bread pudding. So in conclusion, we live in very interesting times. <laughs> to say the least, right? 
So when the CEO of Farmville is arrested for child labor, labor law violation, and someone starts burning your tweets, I just want you to remember that I fucking called it. <laughs>